Patrick Sertan got a contract extension, and Bo Nix was named team captain. It's a great day in Broncos country as we head into week one. So I still deliver. <laughs> Broncos Country, I'm Lori Lattimore Volkman in my Pat Sertan jersey, and this is the Roundup. The preseason honeymoon is over, and now things are about to get serious for Bo Nix and the 2024 Broncos. The team officially opens its season Sunday against the Seahawks at Lumen Field, one of the toughest places for visiting teams to play. Well, it's going to be loud, um, and so we'll deal with the crowd noise this week, and this won't be the first game we play where it's loud. No matter, Bo Nix and Sean Payton are up for the challenge. Well, I'm excited. Uh, Seattle's a good team. Um, they got a good defense returning, a lot of good players uh, with a new scheme. So uh, we'd be interested to see what to come out and play. But, um, you know, I think they're, they're going to be um, very well coached. Um, they're going to be talented. It's going to be a hostile environment. Um, but it'll be fun. It'll be a good first game. So now, this could be different, but I think um, having been through that and understanding what you know, a loud environment truly means. I think it's it's really important, and um, you know, it's all about communication. It's all about being on the same page, um, keeping it simple, and going out there and executing your job. And um, when you do that, usually you can take some of the the crowd out of it. But it's definitely you know going to be uh, you know the whole game. They're going to be loud. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Sean Payton acknowledged that new Seahawks head coach Mike McDonald is a formidable opponent and will create quite a challenge for his team, especially his offense. Yeah, they, give you, they give you a lot of looks. You know, they, they'll, play, they'll play their odd front and, and they'll move that around. Um, you know, they did, they've done a great job. I think in his last two years, he's second in the league in, you know, takeaways. So they're an opportunistic, aggressive defense, but they do a good job with disguise. Um, they hold their disguise as well, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, they, they create, create some challenges. The goal for every coach with his quarterback is to find his strengths and minimize weaknesses, and that's even more true with a rookie. It's also easier said than done, but Peyton has proved in the preseason that he has a lot of flexibility with a quarterback like Bo Nix. We get a young player like Bo Nix, there's a certain skill sets he has, strengths and weaknesses. Hopefully, uh, we build on the strengths and and, uh, and then really minimize the things maybe uh, that a young player might face, you know, opening up the start of the season. It's always a big deal for a rookie to have his first start in the NFL. But Cortland Sutton believes this moment will not be too big for his quarterback. Um, he's working his butt off, man. He he comes to work every day with a, a, a willingness to learn. He comes to work every day with a, with a demeanor of getting better. And I think that, you know, that's one of the biggest things that you want out of your quarterback. And, you know, he's one of those guys that got the C on his chest. And he carries himself like that. He carries himself like a leader. Um, he doesn't look at look at any stage as it being too big for him. And um, I think that's all we can ask for is our, out of our quarterback and as a leader. On second and ten, Nix wants to throw, zips one in, wide open, Cortland Sutton. Bolstering the offense will be a strong run game and mismatches created a lot through the tight end play. Uh, Joker traits with Pope Jaleel and Greg Dulcich. You know, certainly both of those guys are are guys that can create some matchup issues in the passing game. Um, I kid Jaleel a lot and, and you know, I... You know, he works his tail off. You know, I don't know that I've given him his wings yet, um, but that's really more just being funny. Uh, it gets back to trying to highlight the strong suit of what, what guys do. You know, we're not going to try to run power um, with Greg, and there's certain things, you know, we're not going to want Jaleel to do, and, and there's certain things we feel like they do well. On the defensive side of the equation, cornerback Patrick Sertan will anchor a secondary that plans to give fits to the Seattle Whiteouts. That's the same Sertan who just got a contract extension and became the highest paid defensive back in history. 
and for good reason. Congratulations to Patrick Sertain II. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Negotiates an extension with the Denver Broncos, obviously immediately upon arriving in the NFL from Alabama. Alabama, by the way, has now over a billion dollars in contracts secured in ex-players in this particular offseason. $77.5 million guaranteed going to Patrick Sertain II from the Denver Broncos. And obviously the Denver Broncos in a little bit of a transition era here with Sean Payton from the old to the new. Russ Wilson gets a bunch of money. He's gone. They view this guy as a pillar, as they should. Oh, yeah. on the defensive side of the ball literally since the day that he got to Denver. Now, nine-year NFL vet, host of everything DB, good D, bad D. Mm -hmm. uh, Darius J. Butler breaks it all down. Why did Patrick Satan get this money, and uh, what does this mean for the cornerback market as a whole? You want a guy that can play off coverage, he can play off, he can play press, he can tackle. His technique, technically sound, probably the top five corner almost the day he entered the league. The 2021 first-round draft pick has amassed 187 tackles, 150 on his own, seven interceptions, 36 batted passes, and one forced fumble. He's a two-time Pro Bowler and the 2022 First Team All-Pro member. I mean, it was inevitable. My, 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 dog, my dog was going to get that bag at some point because, I mean, Pat is the best corner in the NFL. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about anybody lists. I don't care about none of the sports channels. I don't care about none of the daggone people that sit up there and talk all day because they watch a whole bunch of TV. I don't care about none of that. I watch Pat work every single day. I watch Pat go to, go to work and go to battle on, on, on Sundays and whatever day we're playing. And, you know, um, he, he, he's, he's proven it. Um, week in and week out, he's proven that he's the best at what he does, and I'm just happy for I'm happy for him to be able to have that next step in his career. Um, you know, the, the, I don't think it's, nothing's going to change about him. He's going to continue to be Pastor Tan, Mr. Lockdown, Mr. Strap Up, however you want to call it. You know, that's I'm very happy for him. And he's looking to bring that dominance to the field on Sunday. Um, I'm glad to be here for many years to come and looking to build on the future, for sure. At the end of the day, I just focus on doing the best I could uh, do on the field, being the best version of myself each and every day. Um, I don't try to allow the pressure to get to me. You know what I mean? I build off of it, you know, just play the game that I play and love doing. So for me to be able to lead such a great team moving forward uh, towards the season. So um, I'm honestly very grateful for it, and um, I can't wait for the year to start. And it's that kind of performance from your secondary that allows a defensive coach to really open up the entire defense against an opponent. And, and it actually can give the defense some freedoms relative to how they want to support the run. Um, look, they're just they're just hard to find. You know, it's probably one of the harder positions to play in our league, and uh, and so it does create matchup problems offensively, but it just as importantly, more importantly, um, allows you s some flexibility on defense to do things maybe you couldn't normally do if, if you didn't have someone of that caliber. But at the end of the day, success on Sunday will be measured by how much Peyton and Knicks can help the offense move down the field and win the game. It's no small feat then that the rookie was named team captain by his teammates. That shows leadership on and off the field, and he's ready for it. The good teams and the, 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 the successful teams, they find out whatever it is, and they're able to go out there and adjust. Um, and so I know you're not going to score on every drive. Nobody's ever done it. So you got to adjust and just understand that that's the adversity that's going to be part of it. And uh, you move forward trying to find a better way and trying to go down there and score points, whatever it means. Asked by reporters when he thought the offense would know to trust him, he said, it better be now. Yeah, well, I hope it's. Uh, I hope it's now. I hope you don't go into a game, uh, a game with no trust. But um, I think you just uh, you gain that over time, and I think they see you work, they see you play. I see them play, and you just form this relationship that you can go out there and trust them because you've seen, you know, the guy do it over and over and over. And um, that's the main thing is trusting and is is doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and so if that's your job and you got to get your depth, or if you got to get um, the ball to this person, whatever. It may be if you've done it over and over, you're just going to establish that trust. And I, I believe we got great trust on offense. Um, we all trust each other, um, trust the receivers, the O line, um, got great trust in them, ball carriers, whoever it may be. Um, but we have a, a very close knit group um, offensively and defensively. Um, but I think that that trust is going to carry over into some confidence in, during game time. Um, you only get your first game one time, so you got to go out there and make the most of it. They're back on the ball, show the ball to sell the defense 
running to his right, delivering the- Do you hear that, Broncos country? That's Sean Payton building a team. Let's freaking bow. <laughs> Go Broncos. Territory, Nix takes the snap. Able to complete. Well, could see him be a target a couple more times tonight. Walker's in there now. And it's Patrick. All these interviews and private workouts. And, you know, you're sort of expecting the unexpected. Javante Williams out of the backfield. Another first down. This week and you'll get him. Preseason game three right here. Here's Nick's little pump. And he'll get the sideline again. It's a kind of a cool little extra thing that maybe, you know, being smart with how he runs is how coach thinks about it. Nick's in some trouble. Here's Nick's. A little bit of a pass rush. Zips it in there. What a throw.